everyone! I'm Haley from Moth Child Cosplay and I'm going to talk you through this time-lapse video of the making of my Legombi armor. So first things first, I'm going to show you guys my reference photo. There it is. I know this is not the official Monster Hunter artwork for the set, however it's freaking adorable, okay? It's so cute. I love it. This photo made me fall in love with the whole armor set. It's just absolute perfection. So let's just jump right on into it. I started with the bow first and you're going to see me making a pattern here for the big fuzzball on the bow. By the way, I chose the wildling bow. I just thought it was cute and I wanted a quick little prop to make. Um, I basically just used the same form that somebody would make if they were making a really large like beach ball. Thank you Pinterest for having a pattern for one of those by the way. Uh, cut out all my pieces and I took them all to a sewing machine after I cut them out of the faux fur and I stitched them all together. I left a hole in the top and the bottom of this ball as well as a hole that I cut out in the front and the back. Um, the hole in the front and the back is for my hand, the one on the top and for the bottom is for the PVC to go through. And here I am, I'm taking my faux fur and I'm taking a brush to brush out and pull all of those little hairs caught in the seams, just to help make it look much better. Next, I'm taking my fleece, my white fleece fabric, and I'm cutting a cylinder that I'm going to sew to the front and back holes, not the top and the bottom, but the front and the back for my hand to slide through. Um, I'm also going to cut a tiny little hole on the top and bottom centermost part of this cylinder for the PVC pipe to slide through. I then whip stitched that in and I cut out faux and fur and flannel for the little snoot that's on the front. Next I began working on the actual forming of the bow. I used 3 4 inch PVC pipe and my master heat gun, thank you dad for the wonderful birthday gift, to heat it up to a good temperature for it to be compressed. And you're going to see me whipping out this big piece of wood and like applying all 90 pounds of my body weight to try and flatten this out. Try and use something heavier <laughs> because it does take quite a bit of, of force to flatten it. Next, after it was all flat, I took my heat gun and I heated it back up to bend it into the shape. Once I got one section into the shape that I wanted, I traced that line out onto a piece of paper and then used that guideline to curve the second part of the PVC for the other half of the bow. Once those pieces matched up perfectly and I heated them up to, you know, fix any small uh, problems, I took my 3 quarter inch PVC connector and I attached the pieces. After that was all done, I realized that the floof on the wildling bow was actually kind of pink. So I set up my ghettoified little airbrush studio that I use in my apartment, which is probably a really bad idea, and I gave my faux fur a wonderful, nice little pink tint. This is one of my favorite things. I love airbrushing. It's really relaxing, honestly. After that was done, I spritzed my bow with some textured metallic spray paint, and then I went over it with brown and black acrylics to give uh, dimension and interest. After that was all done, I put the little floof into place and glued it, and then I took out my trusty McCall's pattern that I use for almost everything, and I also whipped out my half circle skirt pattern, and lining up the half circle skirt pieces with the bodice, I cut out basically an A-line dress pattern. Um, yes, the Legombi dress is strapless, and I realized this, but I continue to do this pattern because I really love the princess seams and the fit on this pattern is absolutely lovely. I then sewed it all up with my trusty little sewing machine and after that was all sewn up I fit it on my model and I cut it away so that way it would be strapless. After that was done, I took the dress and I traced out the bottom most part of all the different sections, added two inches above that line that I drew, and I used that for my faux fur border. Then I used an X-Acto knife to cut out all the different borders for this dress. Once 
Once that was finished, I pinned them all in place just to make sure they all fit. Next, I whipped out a big piece of paper and using a little pin, I poked little holes through that paper um, showing me where the faux fur, like the top of the faux fur stopped. And I then added two inches to that line, uh, like two inches above, and used this new little drawing for my pink pieces. Of course, I added him allowance for the way. There's my cat. She thought she was helping. She wasn't, but I love her very much. Then I took all these pieces and I traced them onto pink quilter's cotton. I pinned these all in place just to make sure everything fit exactly as it needed. Um, you always just want to make sure that it, it's all perfect, you know? After I made sure that it all fit, I went and I started drawing out the embroidery pattern that was going to be repeated on all of the pink borders along this entire costume. Ugh, this was a nightmare. It just took forever embroidering everything. And at first I was just kind of going freehanding it. Um, I didn't have an embroidery hoop or anything. Well, I had one, I just wasn't using it because I was lazy, basically. And I realized that it was just taking way too long without it and it was causing so many problems. So I decided very quickly that no, I needed an embroidery hoop to uh, finish this efficiently and to make it look nice. After I embroidered everything, I pinned it down onto the bottom of the dress, like right over the faux fur bordering, and I whip stitched it all in place by hand. You can't really see it very well in this clip, but there's going to be a lot more clips of me doing this along the entire making of this costume, so I mean, you'll see, you'll see lots of it. After that was all done, I cut out triangles from orange fleece and I whip stitched those, surprise, in place. After I whip stitched these orange triangles in place, which you will be seeing in a second, I then took orange embroidery floss and I gave a nice embroidered border along the pink embroidered pieces along the, the top and the bottom, basically. Um, it's like such a tiny detail, nobody's gonna see it, no one's gonna care, but it makes me feel happy, and that's what matters the most, right? Then I began making the hat. I got a really basic fleece hat pattern off of Pinterest. Thank you, Pinterest. And then I began drafting the little front part. Uh, I just kind of eyeballed it. And it turned out pretty nice for eyeballing it. Of course, there are things that I'd do differently, but I'm happy with it. And I really like my little hat. Honestly, I've worn it out in public a couple of times already this year. <laughs> Next up, you're going to see a photo of the front and back pieces. Woo, there they are. Um, just kind of showing you what I was sewing onto the actual hat itself. But before doing that, I had to embroider the little design onto the fronts. I just used a basic running stitch and then a French knot for the middle decoration piece. Then I began working on the ears. And obviously, they're ears. They're really simple. They're really easy. Um, they're just little rectangular shapes. I traced out some faux fur for the bordering because I just love faux fur. I sewed on a little floof ball onto the tips and then I lined it with pink quilters cotton. After that was all lined and everything, I sewed it with whip stitches, surprise, onto the hat. Next, you're going to see me making the little earmuffs that accompany the hat. You can see the little headband right there and you see me tracing out a little circle. Little circles to help enforce what I'm about to do next. What I'm about to do next is take a much larger circle of fleece and put running stitches along the border. Once those running stitches are in place, I'm going to cut some little strips of tulle to put inside. I'm going to then cover the tulle with the cardboard and pull those stitches taut. And it gives a nice little curved surface. 
after that's all done, I put another little circle of fleece onto the back just to make it look pretty and to add structure and support to everything that's happening. Then, after that was finished, I sewed the little earmuff pieces onto the headband itself. Once this was sewn on, the hat was actually pretty much done. All I had to do was sew the little headband piece onto the hat. Next up, you're going to see me working on the gloves. I went through about three different pattern renditions for the gloves until I came to what I liked the most, and here you're going to see me doing the first two. By the way, I forgot to record it, but the pattern for the leg piece is almost the exact same as the pattern for the gloves. The only difference is that the wrist slash ankle area for the leg pieces is not traced, or um, not gathered, sorry. <laughs> And here I am making my final rendition for the gloves. Um, you can see it's just a really long trapezoid with a small little triangle for the top of the hand. Um, it matches, the top of the trapezoid matches my measurement right over my elbow. And the bottom most measurement of this trapezoid was 15 inches. I just gathered that down to the measurement of my wrist and it just fluked up perfectly. Uh, it was exactly what I was looking for and it was surprisingly easy. I skipped showing this part, but I mean, I went and I embroidered things and I cut out more triangles and then I'm embroidering with the orange. Lots of this happening. And there's my cat and he's really cute and his name is Samson and he's really fat. Look at him, he's so cute. So next up, I'm gonna work on the capelet. The capelet's a basic circle skirt pattern, except it's cape, so it's not a circle skirt, it's a circle cape. Anyway, I put it on my mannequin and I made it sure it was all even, then I folded it back in half and, you know, just made sure it was symmetric. I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did with the, uh, the dress and trace it on to faux fur. Use an exacto to cut it out. And then I'm gonna do, you know, trace it onto the pink quilter's cotton. And then, Surprise! I'm embroidering it. What am I going to do after I embroider it? I'm gonna whip stitch it onto the cape. Next, I'm starting on the belt. The belt has a couple of different pieces. It has a big blue back piece and then a small orange actual belt I just kind of drafted it using my measurements and what I thought was a good measurement, you know? Then I painted it using a mixture of acrylic paint and fabric medium so that way it wouldn't crack or crinkle or anything since it is pleather and it will be flexing a lot. I added some white borders and white details as well as a little bit of orange and here's a photo of the finished pouches for the belt. They turned out pretty freaking cute if I do say so myself. Yes. And here you see me whip stitching the, ba the bags all together. I know, lots of whip stitching, like I mentioned before. Um, these took a while, but I really enjoyed them. I watched a really cool documentary called, oh my gosh, I think it was The Intruder or something like that. It was so good. If I remember the name, I'll post it. It was really cool. Here's a photo of the finished belts and pouches. I only went with two because I accidentally made them too big, but they still turned out cute. And here is the finished costume. I look so cute. I'm not trying to sound like self-centered or anything, but like this is, it's, 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 it's adorable. It's so cute. It's like floofy and it's warm and it's pink and it's white and it's bright and it's the opposite of me almost entirely because as you can tell from my intro, I wear all black and I have green hair and this is all white with pink and like orange and blue. There's me with the bow. The bow really, really complements the set really well. I thought it was such a great idea to go with the bow. A cat ran away in fear. Here I am, posing some more. Ooh, so cute, so sophisticated, so fancy, so fancy. Oh my, oh my. Yes, shoot the bow, shoot the bow. I don't know what I'm doing. Next, you're gonna see a close-up of the cape and the hat. I'm really, really happy with this hat. I think it's so freaking cute. And like I said, honest to God, I've worn it a couple of times this year, just like out and about in the winter. It's really warm and I'm so happy with it. You're gonna see a close-up of the belt, the cape, and my gloves. The gloves, I actually like a lot more than I originally thought that I would. Ooh, little wave for the camera. Little wave for the camera. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me, I'm sorry. Here is the sides of the gloves. I sewed little floops onto the drawstrings that I put in. And the other side. I put on a turtleneck that was way too big for me. It's Justin's and he's a men's size large and I'm like a men's size extra small on a good day. <laughs> um, so it like overwhelmed me. And there's the back, my cute little thingies. Here are my feet pieces that I made as well as the hem of the dress. I really like the way these little leg warmers turned out. I think they're adorable and they're so cute and kitschy. Kitsy. I don't know what the heck a kitschy is. And you can see the back, I have little belts that I also used a fabric medium for. And I put little metal tips on them, which is such a small detail, but I really think it added to the professionality of this outfit. And that's it! That is my finished Lagambi set. Hope you guys enjoyed my video. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me, and thank you for supporting everything that I do. Honest to God, I never expected that I would have a thousand followers on Facebook. That's mind-blowing. It's amazing. Here, have a video of me doing the little prance emote from Monster Hunter.